Hello and welcome to the Auto Remarketing Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Overby, Senior Editor of Auto Remarketing. And I'm joined today by my co-host, my co-pilot, Justin Mirsky Blank, Justine Mirsky Blank, who is the Events and Marketing Manager here at our parent company, Cherokee Media Group. Justin, thank you so much for uh, co-hosting with me today. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Absolutely. Well, our guest today is actually someone you told me about who's uh, who's got a real cool story to share and a really just unique business model that uh, that is kind of a new and reflecting the new waves of, of business and automotive and, and social media. And, and she is Kelly Stumpy, who is the CEO and founder of The Car Mom. It's a, a platform that empowers moms and, and families to make more informed and confident car buying decisions, which I think all of us who, who go to buy a car can certainly use. So Kelly, so good to meet you and, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you guys so much for having me. I am seriously so excited and honored to be here. Absolutely. We're, we're happy to have you. And so, you know, reading, reading a little bit about your background and, and watching some of the, the Instagram stories and posts you've had, I understand you, you've you been in the car business your whole life, including the, the dealership space. And then and then last year you, you launched the Car Mom platform. So can you give us a sense of what what motivated you to, to start this business and what kind of impact were you looking to have in the, in the automotive space? Sure. So my family owns car dealerships. My dad and his brother own six car dealerships in St. Louis. When I graduated college in 2016, I started selling cars. I love selling cars. I mean, it is my absolute favorite thing to do. But as I'm sure a lot of people who listen to this can relate, the car business hours are really hard. Mm -hmm. um, and I was getting married. I was uh, thinking about starting a family. And I just didn't see how I was going to be able to sustain um, family life and selling cars, especially being a woman and a mother. So I kind of had to take a back seat from the sales side. And I just kind of settled into some more like operation things around the dealership. I worked in the BDC a little bit. Um, I did some direct mail, but I really missed selling cars because that's really what I love to do. So uh, when I was pregnant with my second daughter and the coronavirus pandemic hit, I was just kind of reflecting about just everything that was going on in the world and ultimately how hard it was for mothers to navigate this new normal. And I thought about how hard it was for me just to even take my toddler to the grocery store. And then I started to think, oh my gosh, how are these families going to car dealerships? And as you guys know, dealerships were essential. So we remained open the whole time. And I just really sympathize with mothers who would have to drag a toddler to a dealership, meet a salesperson, give them their driver's license, have them pull up a car, meet the manager, get pressured to look at payments. Also, they could see their stroller didn't even fit in the back seat. So I thought, well, what if I could just kind of use, um, you know, my network? I have access to all of these vehicles. And what if I could just give mothers and families a first look? I never wanted to make the, the final decision for anyone because I think you, know, you need to go in and test drive the car. But I thought, well, if I could take their list from five cars to three cars, well, that's two afternoons I just saved a family at a dealership. And that was just the main thing I wanted to, to set out to do, because as a mom, I just know how valuable our time is. So that's really what I set out to do, just to save mother's time and frustration. Justine, I throw this question at you. As a mom, as a, as a car buyer, what has been your experience buying cars recently? Well, actually, it's funny you ask, because I have le I've always leased cars. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, actually, since starting at Cherokee Media Group, my perspective on CPO or buying used has really shifted and my lease is almost up on my car. And so I've actually, you know, they're pushing me like, what are you going to do? How are you going to change things? And um, are you going to get another car? You know, we don't have any, but come in because we have something for you, except we don't actually have anything for you right now at all. And you're not going to get a deal. You're not going to do this. And from the perspective of a car buyer, that's frustrating for me because I'm just trying to fit. I want like everyone else who want the best deal, but we also, from the mom's perspective, I want to save time. I want what's best for my family. Um, especially as it's, you know, it could be growing or, you know, and I'm looking, well, if I lease another car, that's another three years. If I purchase, that's an indefinite period of time. And I want to make sure the car is going to work for me. And you know, especially with this post kind of middle somewhere part of the pandemic, I'm kind of at a loss. And so it is kind of finding that balance of, I don't want to spend hours and days looking for a car. I don't have time. 
as a mom, I want what's going to work best for my family. And I also want a deal when there are no deals to be had. So I'm kind of in this weird limbo phase right now. So it really hits home. You know, with, um, with that kind of experience, you know, Kelly, when, when somebody with Justine's experience who wants to find a deal brings, you know, a question to you about car buying, what are some of the ways that you've used your platforms, whether it's the YouTube videos, the Instagram, the website, what are some of the most effective ways you've found of interacting with car buyers and helping them through this journey? So I would say, you know, one of the biggest tips I give my audience that really seems to hit home because a lot of my following, obviously they want a good deal. Like Justine said, another huge concern, especially since my platform is mainly women is that they want to feel, um, they want to feel respected and mm-hmm. confident in their car buying purchase. And so people always ask me, how do I get the salesperson to take me seriously? How do I get them to not only talk to my husband? And I truly believe that you can fix 99% of your car buying problems by choosing a proper salesperson. Mm-hmm. So there are really, and I'm so pro dealer. I mean, my whole life has been around dealerships and I am, I'm a car salesperson. I know I would took nothing but amazing care of my customers. So I get frustrated when I'm, when I have this, um, you know, the stigma around my industry. So I, I mean, a huge part of my platform is kind of wanting to bridge the gap and change the way people look at a car salesperson. So I think that there's no tips I can give you to get a man to take you seriously. It's 2021. So if they're not doing it, they're not worth my time. There are so many good salespeople who want to earn your business, want to take good care of you, want to build relationships. And I think if you do your diligence, you either go on dealer Raider or you read Google reviews, or you go to the dealer's website, you find a salesperson, you start communicating with them ahead of time to make sure you have good synergy. And then you schedule an appointment. You'll have a great car buying experience. But if you show up on a busy Saturday at 4 PM, well, who are you going to get stuck with? You're going to get stuck with the guy outside drinking an energy drink. Those aren't the good salespeople. I'm sorry. I am. I, I am a good salesperson. I didn't have time to wait for customers to pull up. I was booked by appointment. So you've got to choose a good salesperson and it is it's the best way to put you in control of the car buying process. Well, it's kind of on the flip side of that. Um, you know, you've, you, you mentioned just some of the ways that consumers can, can work with dealerships. What has working in a dealership for so much of your life kind of taught you about business and and your role now? And what did you take away from that experience? You know, I think specifically when it comes to car buying, I mean, Mm -hmm. selling cars is a really hard job. Um, And so I think I've really learned how to build an audience that trusts me. And my authenticity is always my most important thing Um, to the point where, you know, sometimes I think, some dealers might listen to my content and be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you're saying that. I can't believe you're saying that. But my point is, is I, I'm not ignorant to the fact that dealerships have to make money. I totally understand that. But there are ways that we can still provide a transparent buying process, make a little bit of money, but you have to be authentic and you have to, you have to be able to build trust with an audience. So just like I was able to get my you know, customers to trust me when I was selling cars, I, I spend most of my time building trust and building value with my audience before I try to sell them anything. And to, to, to shift gears a little bit here, um, I saw the, you had a story on Instagram yesterday kind of outlining the impact of the chip shortage. And I, I thought it was really insightful and in how that impacts the car buying process for everyday consumers. Yeah. And, you know, that, that, as you know, is the biggest story in automotive this year. But what are, what are some of the other big trends in automotive that you're watching this year specifically as it impacts your audience? You know, I think that I'm really excited about the EVs and what's yeah. happening there. Um, you know, I have, I mean, I'm in Missouri, so like, I can't say we're like the EV hub of the country, but <laughs> we're starting to kind of, you know, get a few more out here. And I think families are really excited about those just for, you know, the convenience of not having to go to a gas station and just some of the better fuel economy. Um, so I'm excited about those. Uh, I mean, we're very excited about the new Kia Carnival here at the car, here at the car mom, because anytime a minivan comes out, we get really excited. And I kind of think that new, I mean, it's a good, it's a good looking minivan. So I think I've had a lot of my following who went from, um, you know, I'm never driving a minivan to, well, okay, never say never. Cause I'm going to go get a Kia Carnival because it looks awesome. So we're excited about those. Um, and then, you know, I have a lot of people who, um, continue to be excited about leasing and, I'm really anxious to see some, and I'm, I'm so pro leasing for growing families because I think it's just so hard to predict your family's growth. You know, if you get into, a, if you go out and you buy that Hyundai Palisade, cause it's a three row car. And then next thing you know, you get pregnant with twins and then you can't fit 
three or four car seats in the vehicle, you're kind of in not a great financial situation. So I'm very pro leasing and I'm anxious to see if any um, manufacturers kind of continue to improve like that, those like subscription services that are kind of coming out to do like even shorter term leases. Like I know Volvo has one in the works, I know Cadillac has one. Um, so I think those are going to be really cool. And I think my audience would really like those. So those are what, I, that's what I'm excited about. That's really intriguing to me. I actually didn't know. I don't know about those kind of those programs that you just spoke about with Escal, uh, you know, with Cadillac and Volvo, Volvo with the shorter lease kind of subscription. Yeah, Everything's a subscription. Yeah. Box. They're, they're kind of, di- I mean, they're different, but it's essentially like, in, I mean, who knows what, because there's no cars yeah. now. So I don't even know if they're doing the programs, but they have been, I guess, I guess they're more concepts, but I definitely think shorter term leases would be yeah. exciting. And quite honestly, one huge change that my audience has gone through is due to all of the different um, career shifts that people have made mm-hmm. throughout the past year and a half, I have a, had a lot of families go from um, two car to one car families and just mm-hmm. kind of seeing like how they're navigating that and, you know, having to truly get a family car because, you know, one or both work from home now and they just didn't have the need for two vehicles. Mm-hmm. And to your point on the, um, on the electrics, I think, um, I think it's going to be interesting to watch and potentially maybe draw more people into the electric EV segment um, is that more used car electric vehicles that are maybe at a lower price point that people can afford. And um, one of the pieces of news we had this past week was um, Cox Automotive purchased a company that can kind of works in the battery health space, the EV battery health space. And I think that maybe can um, kind of help bring about more confidence in the used EV um, space. Are you, from your audience, do you get a lot of questions on electric vehicles and potentially pre-owned EVs? Yeah, I really, I really do. I think that my audience has a huge um, reliability concern with EVs, and I think mm-hmm. that they would be very intimidated by pre-owned EVs, especially. Um, there also hasn't really been, I mean, we're just starting to come out with some great um, SUV EVs, like the ID4, for example, or you know, even some of like the new hybrids that have come out. So I, th- I think we should all, I think my audience will be more excited to kind of dip their toes into the hybrid world before we just like mm-hmm. go t- totally EV. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm really anxious for more, I'm anxious for more hybrids to come out and quite honestly surprised that more hybrids aren't out right now, especially in those larger SUVs. Cause you know, the Toyota Highlander has it. So it's crazy to me that we can't have that same in like the new Nissan or the, I'm just surprised that some of the other manufacturers haven't quite played with the active um, hybrid in the large SUVs. Speaking of just used used cars in general, um, you know we're a, we're primarily a used car publication. So um, I'm curious uh, your take on the pre owned market and why why might it make sense for some families, some consumers to go the used car route or even potentially certified. For- used car market is crazy right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I think what's what's been funny about what I've been kind of preaching to my audience is I used to say a huge benefit of new is that you can get whatever you want because it's, it's a new vehicle. So you have more control over trim level and color. Well, that is not the case anymore. Um, Cause you know, we always make the joke in the industry that there's, you know, there's no used car factory. If you want to get exactly what you want, then you have to go new. But now I've been saying, so that, that to me was like, well, yeah, it costs more, but you get exactly what you want. Well, now you don't get exactly what you want. You get what's available. So I think that that opens up I think that puts another check in the used car column because you're already not going to get what you want. So you might as well pay less for it. Yeah. Um, and I, I love certified pre-owns and I, I really think those are some of the best ways to buy used vehicles. I started in um, the industry selling uh, BMWs. So we obviously did a lot of certified pre-owned mm-hmm. BMWs because they have a really great CPO program. So I, I, I really love those. Um, and you know, I think a lot of my following has kids who trash cars, so they, they can't always stomach going out and getting that brand new vehicle because they, they know it's not going to stay looking new for long. And it's, it's that like, you know, that, as you know, from, from working at a dealership, it's that like new experience, you get the warranty, you get the, you get a better financing rate. Yeah. Yeah. You get all that, except it's, you know, it's a, a lower price point. And I think it's such, it's such peace of mind. Cause I always tell to my audience and ask someone who sold cars for so long, you know, we would have cars come in all the time, great used cars, one owner, mm-hmm. low mileage, but you know, they missed their oil change by too many miles and we couldn't certify the car. So it's not, it's not saying it's a bad car, but when you have a certified car, I mean, it's one thing to pass state inspection. It's another thing to pass the dealership inspection. It's a whole other thing to pass a CPO inspection. So mm-hmm. I think that, I mean, 
to pass 130, 140, 160 multi-point inspection is, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Peace of mind is everything, especially as a mom, right? Or a exactly. parent. Yeah. You want to know that the car you're getting and you're putting your family in and driving, you know, eight hours on a road trip somewhere because you can't afford plane tickets or whatever, that it's safe yeah. and it's going to last right. because you also don't want to have to go through the process over and over again, especially mm-hmm. right now. That's huge. Justin, you mentioned you're, you've always leased and you know, as, as Kelly can, can attest, leasing is very closely tied to, to CPO in terms of yeah. off lease cars are the ones that yeah. tend to get, would you ever consider like a lease buyback, you know, buying a, buying a lease car CPO, you think? Um, you know, I do. I, that's something that I'm kind of toying or, you know, between, I think I grew up in a family where we always leased cars. That was just, it's what I know. And I always had the mindset of, I want the new, like every three years I get whatever's new and shiny. And, um, you know, I don't have to worry about the hunt for the perfect CPO or the perfect, you know, used vehicle. I'm just going to get exactly what I want. Like Kelly said, we, it, there's that comfort in the past in knowing that you're going to get exactly what you want out of a new vehicle, except that's not really the case anymore because they're not available. You're kind of, so it almost is level leveling the playing field, which I'm processing a lot more lately. Um, so yeah, I would absolutely, you know, there's still going to be more research involved. I think either way you go now, whether you're buying or leasing CPO used new, what have you, there's just more work involved, I think on the consumer's part. To go back to one of your, your early points, Kelly, about the, the inventory shortage. And yesterday in, in the story, you mentioned that the uh, smaller used car lots, independent dealers may have a little bit more trouble given the, the inventory crunch. You know, I know you're, you're, you come from the franchise side, but any, any advice for those folks in terms of how to find inventory amid this inventory crunch? Yeah, it's, you know, I don't, I, I don't necessarily think that they necessarily will have because we're all going to the same place for cars, right? We're right. all going to the auction. I just think that it's going to be harder if they don't have really flourishing service centers mm-hmm. to be able to kind of, you know, keep those, you know, keep their profits good for the yeah. year. Uh, I just think that I, I think the key for those dealerships is to really figure out who your audience is and, and buy cars accordingly. Yeah. You know, I think people also, I think luckily people are kind of under the assumption that everyone understands that cars are going to cost more. So, you know, really being able to make sure you can get the best, even if it does cost more, I still think you'll be able to move the unit and then, you know, hopefully get a good trade in as well. And then just, I mean, always, always, always flourishing those relationships. And I think that a lot of my audience just gets frustrated because they can't even get someone to like, they, my audience is educated. They know the cars are hard to find what they want is someone to be like, what do you want? Let's work together. I will find you the vehicle. Kind of offer like that custom car buying service because Mm -hmm. a lot, I mean, a lot of the salespeople who I know and just kind of the stories I've heard is they're like, oh, well, you can't get, you can't get a Telluride right now. We don't have any. So then that's just all they hear. And these people just want someone to be like, yes, it's hard to find. I'm going to help you do it though. And here's how we're going to do it. Give me your list. I'll go to auction. And I think that the word auction was so scary for so long for consumers to hear. Um, But now that I think there's more information and I think if you can just educate on exactly what the auction is, it's not a bunch of cars that didn't run that yep. then get sent to auction. It's where enterprise, franchise dealerships, independent dealerships, where everybody goes and buys cars. What are you looking for? And let me, let me help you buy it. I just think kind of offering that concierge service would be huge. Absolutely. Well, and, and there's those now in the wholesale market, but there's all those like alternative platforms that are sort of the Carvana, but for wholesale cars where you can buy cars online and it's kind of a mix of retail and, you know, remarketing. And, and there's just different ways that dealers can find cars and can, can yeah. come work directly with dealers to find those wholesale cars and, and do exactly what you're, you're uh, talking about there. But, and kind of, kind of speak, speaking of industry, industry partnerships and, and that sort of thing, I, I understand that you have partnered recently with Kelly Blue Book and Otter Trader. So, can you share a little bit about what work you're doing with them and um, kind of what you guys have going on there? 
yeah, it was quite the pinch me moment to be, I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I, I struggle with my identity. Cause like sometimes I'm an automotive journalist. Sometimes I'm an influencer and on my influencer platform, I had, you know, had a, a couple of cool partnerships with like some motherhood related brands or like some mm-hmm. food brands, just like little things, but to land a partnership in my niche with such a well-respected name has just been amazing. And I'm so excited because they have a, they're doing it. We're doing an entire car buying campaign together. So it's a three month long campaign. And we're basically taking a consumer through the entire car buying process. So we just finished our first one and it was all about the Kelly Blue Book instant cash offer tool, which was so fun to talk about because it's the tool that I used at, while selling cars and to be able to share with my audience was awesome. And then we have, you know, things coming up with selecting the car based on your monthly budget, servicing the vehicle, um, researching the vehicle, just basically every step of the car buying process. So I'm super, super excited um, to be able to do that. Very cool. Is this cool. is this the first of the kind of industry type partnerships you've had or is there, has there been other folks you've worked with? I did do a three month uh, campaign with cars.com and really, and really enjoyed that as well, but just um, was really excited to have the opportunity to work with, with Cox. Yeah. Very cool. That's, that's a great company and, and great accomplishment for you there. So congratulations. on Thank that. You. Congratulations. That's huge. Yeah, very Thank cool. You. Well, um, well, just the, uh, just the, the last, uh, last question I have uh, before, before we let you go here, Kelly, if folks are listening to this podcast and want to learn more about you and, and your company and, and where to, where to interact and ask good questions to you, where can, where can they find the car mom? Yeah, well, you can find us on our website at the car mom official or on Instagram or YouTube at the car mom. Well, Kelly, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Justine, for being my co-pilot on this episode and uh, really enjoyed talking to you both. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Kelly. Well, that's going to do it for today's episode of the Auto Remarketing Podcast. My thanks to Kelly, Justine, and our entire crew at Auto Remarketing. For Nick Zulovich and Matt Rice, our producer, I'm Joe Overby. Thanks for listening.